Good evening. As I offer this Mass for my mom, it's almost a month now, just I would like to say a few words. It is always fun talking with my mom, and I'm the only one at home call my, no my mom by name. So whenever I call from here, I just call her by name, she would laugh. And then the next thing I would ask, only one English sentence I taught her, how are you? And she would answer, fine. And that is the way our conversation always began. And she had been a wonderful mom, showing the way, the path. I'm so proud now that offering this Mass in a special way as pastor to my mom and to my dad too. Today's scriptures, my dear brothers and sisters, warns us that it is our final decision for or against God. That is our choosing to obey Him gracefully by doing His will or choosing to go against His will which will decide our eternal reward or punishment. As free beings, we are the ones who choose our eternal destiny. In the first reading that we heard today, the Lord our God, through his prophet Ezekiel, corrects the Jewish beliefs that children inherit the guilt of their ancestors and are punished for their sins, and that God is more strict than merciful. But God explains that his mercy overrules strict justice, and that evil punishes only for our sins, not for the sins of our ancestors. And the second reading, St. Paul's letter to the Philippians also affirms the truth that the final choice for God, made by perfect obedience to him, will be rewarded. Paul emphasizes the fact that it is because of Christ's obedience to God's will in emptying himself, taking the human form and humbling himself by accepting even death on a cross, that the God the Father exalted Christ bestowed on him the name above every other name and made Jesus the recipient of universal adoration. And in the parable that we heard today's gospel, a man with two sons tells both to go out to work in the vineyard. The first son says, you won't go, but later regrets it and, and works. The second son says, he will go but does not. In each case, it is the final decision that is more important. Jesus teaches through this sort of parables that repentant tax collectors and prostitutes represented by the first son who initially refused to go will make their way into the kingdom of God before the chief priests and the elders represented by the second in the parable. By their pride and their refusal to obey God's call to repentance, the scribes and the Pharisees are excluding themselves while the tax collectors and sinners whom they despised and repenting for their sins and will be accepted into God's kingdom. It is a parable on the necessity of offering a continual yes to the saving act of God, ready to undergo a sort of conversion experience in our lives, enabling us to do God's will. The two things that we can learn from today's liturgy. The first one, we need to do God's will every day. Each one of us is responsible to God for every one of our actions. And the just God will punish or reward each individual 
according to that person's actions. Since we are not sure about the moment of our death, our only guarantee of dying in God's friendship is to live in that friendship always, saying yes to God by doing His will. And the second lesson, it is never too late for us to repent, be converted, and allow the Holy Spirit to renew our life. If we have been disobedient to God in our past life, we need to knock at the door of God's mercy. God can and will do for us what in His mercy He did for the repentant tax collectors and harlots in the parable and in real life too. Hence, every night we need to repent of our sins and ask for God's pardon. If we are in serious sin, we also request and are expected to be reconciled with God, the Church, and our brothers and sisters through the sacrament of reconciliation in order to be able to receive Jesus in our Holy Communion. Let us remember that it is never too late for us to turn back to God, to come back to God. Let us pray for this grace during this Mass. Amen.